When people hear about Doom 2, one major thing immediately comes to everyone's mind. The super shotgun. But close after it, people usually think about its city levels, or rather, how much they hate them. However, this is an opinion I could never share myself. When I played the game for the first time back when I was around 15, I was thrilled to be playing a game that had places in it that somewhat resembled real life. I never thought that they were bad in any way, especially not when I was replaying the game for the 100th time on my GBA. And yet, history hasn't been kind to them, considering how almost any discussion of Doom 2 has to include at least a small rant about how terrible a job it did at portraying cities. I do agree that these stages aren't the greatest visually and even have a lot of other problems, but I just don't believe that you should immediately write them off because of that. So, I'd like to find out exactly what the issues are that people have with them, and then I want to explain not only how I think these maps are misunderstood, but even her strength compared to other city levels at the time. It'd be cool if you left a comment now saying what you think about them, and then after watching, edit it and say whether your opinion changed or not. For now, however, let's start by determining what exactly counts as a city level. <laughs> Now, despite all the outrage over them, you might be surprised to hear that there really aren't that many city levels in Doom 2. Hell, there's not even that many levels that take place on Earth. Only two thirds of the game are set on our planet, since you eventually go back to Hell to defeat the Icon of Sin. But out of all of those levels, which ones take place in cities, or at the very least, in areas where many people could have reasonably lived at some point? The smartest way of answering that question is to go off of what the game states. The manual explains that the Doom Marine must first recover a spaceport taken over by Hell's forces so that the remnants of humanity can evacuate into space. This objective is mentioned again right before Dead Simple, which makes up an outpost of Hell, and is completed after Circle of Death, or Or of Destruction, if we want to get spherical about it. So while all of those 11 deaths are set on Earth, they are very much not part of any city. Immediately after rescuing humanity, however, you receive a message that the source of the invasion comes from within the heart of your own home city. And once you actually venture to the portal after Gotcha, you arrive in Hell, again. Some of the maps from this point onward, such as Nirvana, the Chasm and the Abandoned Mines, do look like they could be set on Earth, but perhaps they're just human structures that have been pulled into the underworld, similar to the second episode of Doom 1. It would make sense, considering how twisted logic seems to be in those places. So, the rule of thumb is, if something looks like it could be straight out of Doom 1, either because it's a generic space station or a demonic lava-filled marble zone, it's probably not a city level. So basically, anything with this skybox is what we're looking for. But burning buildings aside, does that background actually indicate that the map is really set inside of a city? Let's look at them individually. The factory is a basic, undetermined factory that produces stuff and things. Now, there are factories where I live, way bigger than this, and even located in residential areas, sometimes right across the street of apartment buildings. But considering it's the first place Doomguy visits right after the spaceport, it might just be on the outskirts of town. Also, if it were not for the skybox, would you really look at this and go, ah yes, this is inside of a city? Probably not. Downtown is undoubtedly the very city the game is talking about, however. There's nothing to say here. The inmost dense is less obvious, though. Story-wise, you should still logically be inside the city, but the level itself is just generic catacombs, perhaps even a castle or a fortress of sorts. I honestly have no idea what this place is meant to represent. Whatever it is, no one actually lives there. The next stage, Industrial Zone, is also a bit questionable. Much like the factory, it mostly consists of indeterminable industrial structures, harboring boxes and crates. But those aren't the only buildings in the area. The whole map is surrounded by massive grey brick walls. You could say that they're merely barriers to prevent people from entering, much like in the factory. And that could be an argument, were they not as tall as the level itself? There's even a waterfront, perhaps some sort of river or ocean, which doesn't get the same treatment. No, they're obviously meant to be actual buildings. The question, however, is whether or not they're residential buildings. It's really impossible to tell, but I'm not willing to write it off immediately, considering the stage itself shares remarkable similarities with downtown, to the point where it should have been set right after it. In fact, it used to at some point. Therefore, let's put a pin in it for now. Thankfully, Suburbs is definitely an urban level, a suburban one in fact. According to Civi, it's even based off of a relocation. Tenements, however, is... well, the tenements. But without the name, would the thought that it's meant to be a livable place even have crossed your mind? Aside from perhaps the main courtyard, there's not really anything that screams people live here. Especially considering how many buildings are made out of metal. So probably not a city level. The courtyard is a bit more distinct, but just as unlikely. It's evidently a courtyard of some sort of castle, palace or other old building like a church or university. 
Much like factories, they can be part of cities, as they're often here, but they can also just as likely be part of hell. The same also applies to the next level, the Citadel. And to round it off, Gotcha is definitely not a city level either. Granted, the whole place is submerged in an ocean of blood and lava, so maybe there used to be houses and skyscrapers here before everything got destroyed and corrupted. But not at this point. To summarize, only downtown and suburbs are distinctly city levels. Industrial zone, maybe a bit less so, but I will count it as one considering how many similarities it shares with the other two. Maps like the factory and the citadel exist basically in the middle of nowhere. And stages such as tenements are also out, because if people lived at some point, they certainly can't anymore. Right, then let's examine those two and a half maps to see what they're even all about. As mentioned in the intro, I often hear a lot of people unanimously agree that the city levels from Doom 2 are terrible, but I never really see them go into much detail about it. For instance, Joel from Vinesauce, who basically just says, they're bad. Why is that everybody except it can do cities in Doom? I just don't like the city levels, I hate the city levels. Cause I'm not sure what it's supposed to be, you know? Mr. Icarus goes a bit more in depth while talking about city levels in general, citing their large size and confused design as downsides. You see, I've been burnt by city-style maps in the past. More than anything, I typically find it's just a consequence of overambition, a few more streets than necessary, a little too convoluted on the internal building design, and certainly repetitive use of urban textures typically doesn't help. Civi also explains a bit about why he dislikes them, such as the lack of straightforward level structure. Hey, all you aspiring level designers, here's a tip. If you need a giant arrow to tell you where to go in the level, the level is not well designed. Another issue is that they apparently don't look anything like actual cities. I've never been to Texas, but I know it doesn't look like this, and there isn't a goddamn imp in every window above your view height. I don't care if Sandy Peterson says he based this level on a real place, it looks nothing like one. Industrial zone. This one doesn't look like a city either, but we can blame Romero for that. And just for good measure, I even asked around a little myself on Reddit and Twitter where people's opinions usually follow the same idea of the city levels being too large and confusing, sometimes even purposefully, not actually looking like a city, and the designs blending together. Alright, so, they are too complex for their own good, aren't the greatest visually, and can't even fulfill the task of representing real cities. But does that mean that they're inherently bad, or perhaps just misunderstood? Even more so, are these aspects really downsides, or potentially even upsides? the contrarian that I am, uh, the good kind of contrarian, not the end of extra kind, I want to say that basically everything that people consider flaws of the city levels is what I actually consider a strength. So let me address all the different points. First, they don't look like cities. This is the one time I'll actually agree with everyone else. Yes, they're too minimalist, lacking many details that would even indicate their urban environments, like streets for the exteriors or even just tables and chairs for the interiors. But it's not like they're completely indiscernible. Downtown features actual city blocks consisting of skyscrapers and other large buildings, even with windows that monsters attack out of. There are also back streets and side alleys, with those little adorable wooden fences at the end. The buildings are also distinct from each other, with some being warehouses, others office buildings or perhaps hotels. I'll admit, you can't really tell what they're meant to be, leaving it up to your imagination. But more on that later. Suburbs doesn't look very much like a suburbia either, but still has actual houses. Two right at the start, a destroyed one across the street, and one stuffed with corpses. There's even a sort of pond nearby, as well as the caves, and something I always interpreted as a loading dock. Industrial zone, as questionable as it is, at least has the same aforementioned warehouses and even a little water side. So you can ascertain what these locations are actually meant to represent. They're just very simplistic in their implementation. At the very least, they look exactly like what the end screen of Doom 1 portrayed cities as, with the same brown brick buildings surrounded by large, grassy fields. Which, obviously, isn't what real-world cities look like either. But you can't say that you are being given different expectations based on the first game. And that's the key word. Expectations. You could very well argue that these levels don't look anything like actual places. However, I'd counter that this was always the case in Doom. You just never noticed it. In fact, you were never able to. I mean, levels from Doom 1 are also all over the place, it just never occurred to you. Because how would you know what a futuristic space station is meant to look like? Or hell for that matter. And yet you never complained, even though they contain realistic features such as generic computer panels floating 5 feet off the ground, random exposed holes filled with toxic sludge, mazes of death, dedicated chainsaw areas, and basically every single level post-episode 1. 
None of those make any logical sense, not even mentioning the lush grassy hills of Mars, or how the Tower of Babel sure is tiny. Hey, maybe it's just cold in hell. Even Lazy Game Reviews shares my opinion on this. This leads right into the level design, which seems kind of nonsensical at first glance. I mean, this is supposed to be a space military base for the most part, and if that's the case, they ought to fire their architect. The number of dead ends, labyrinths, and secret doors is downright bizarre in that respect. All of that was believable to you, because it's not anything you come across each day, let alone something that even exists. It's fantasy. But Doom 2 isn't just fantasy. These are meant to be real places, similar to the ones where you live yourself. And suddenly you get disappointed because they didn't meet your expectations. We also can't forget the fact that these aren't regular old cities, but ones taken over by hell itself. Crawling with tentacles, being submerged in lava and blood, or just straight up having been replaced by demonic structures. So the abstract nature of it could very well be due to the twisted logic of hell warping these environments, much like episode 2 of Doom 1. Another argument I could make for the simplistic design is that they're not really meant to be specific cities at all. The game doesn't state that the portal to hell is located in New York or Sydney or Rome or Warsaw. No, it's just within your hometown. And that can be anywhere, so you're meant to fill in the blanks yourself. I mean, a metropolis from the USA looks a lot different to one from Europe or Asia. But if a map looks like this, well, it might as well be in such city name here. It's kind of like early Lego sets. Their simplicity allows for you to use your imagination. Downtown has this structure made out of mossy bricks, which reminds me a lot of the ruins of buildings damaged in World War II here. And even if its layout is more structured after something like Manhattan, it still looks a lot like the walkable centers in German cities. I once tried to add more detail to these maps based on how I interpreted them, which was really only possible because of how empty they are. It was a lot of fun turning these generic piles of bricks into structures with a real purpose. Again, much like Lego. In that sense, I find it curious how Sivvy claims to hate the design of the city levels, but remarks how he was able to use his imagination for parts of them. This thing here, with this lowering wall, I always thought that was kind of like that part in Duke 3D where you're demolishing the building, right? That's what it always seemed like to me back when I could use my imagination. So, if you can interpret that part as a collapsing building, why couldn't you also imagine the rest taking place in a real city as well? As for not looking good in general, I kind of feel like that also stems from the issue of having high expectations. Doom 1's maps were just as lackluster at times, looking like generic grey and brown space stations at best and nonsensical places with conflicting textures at worst. So if Doom 2 is too outlandish for you, you'd have to write off most of Doom 1 as well. Furthermore, yes, these levels are pretty barren, but not completely devoid of interesting details. Suburbs has many distinct landmarks, such as the little structure with the plasma rifles that I always thought was like some sort of memorial or fountain. Or even just the aforementioned caves, pond and house of gore. Even the large buildings from downtown and industrial zone, despite looking very similar, have recognizable exteriors and unique interiors. These levels only feel so empty because of their large size. But I can guarantee you, if you did the same to a Doom 1 level, you'd get the same result. Admittedly, these points aren't really arguing that Doom 2's level design is good actually, but more so saying that you should put yourself into a different mindset when playing classic Doom games in general. Because I think it's time we admit that Doom never looked that great to begin with. But while visuals weren't one of its strengths, it was a powerhouse when it came to the gameplay, like LGR says. But what it lacks in logical believability, it makes up for in pure fun. So maybe turn a blind eye to it, as long as the gameplay is good. And it is, even if people say that these maps are terribly structured. The second main argument that people have made is that the city levels from Doom 2 are too big for their own good. But even then, I'd say that their large size only works in their favor. They might seem overly massive and pointless to you, but to me, it just makes them a joy to explore. At the lack of a better term, they give Doom 2 something like an open world experience. Still confined to a single map of course, but with an almost non-linear progression. Aside from certain locked off areas, you can explore almost any place at any time. Downtown allows you to go inside just about any building from the start, which means that I usually ignore that giant arrow and instead clear out all the houses first to make traversal easier for later. In suburbs, you also get to choose whether you want to venture to the buildings next door and try to reach the secret areas to collect items for the big battle of the pond, or go there straight away with a few weapons you already have. And in industrial zone, you can even straight up skip the red key by teleporting up the giant wooden structure in the middle of the map, 
I didn't even realize you could do this until I couldn't figure out how to actually obtain the keycard in my latest playthrough. And Doom 2 does this a lot in general. Some stages like Tricks and Traps, The Factory and Gotcha feature multiple areas that aren't even connected to the main progression, but serve as a way for you to kill enemies and collect items just for the sake of it. Skipping keys is also present in other levels like the Citadel, which only requires at least two keys to beat, or the Chasm, where you can basically run right to the exit from the beginning. Doom 1 feels incredibly straightforward in comparison, which is perfectly fine of course, but also helps set Doom 2 apart from its predecessor. I find it very odd that Doom was often heralded as one of those good old school games in regards to its non-linearity, to the point where it was even used as the poster child against modern FPS games at the time, the Call of Duty. But then the same thing is seen as a negative when it comes to Doom 2. Yes, the player does get a little lost sometimes and they might even feel a bit overwhelmed by being faced with such almost unnecessarily gigantic structures. But for all their lack of accurately representing real places, do you know what Doom 2 city levels do translate perfectly? What it really feels like to be in a city. Cities are massive, almost incomprehensibly large. When you step out of the subway station or off the bus and set foot in a monument to humanity's hubris, it's not uncommon to feel like a fish out of water. These levels truly capture that experience of going to a major city for the first time in your life and simply being at awe and wanting to explore everything, while simultaneously not knowing where to start and even not wanting to go anywhere out of fear of getting lost. And I'd argue that this sole fact alone sets them apart from city levels of other games at the time. However, it's not the only one. The other cities from that era that immediately come to my mind would be the ones from Duke Nukem 3D and Blood. And they absolutely wiped the floor with Doom 2's maps, at least appearance-wise. Duke 3D city levels look just fantastic and accurately represent real locations, with actual buildings that look like cinemas, offices, bars and subways. And all of them are cluttered with details like cars, trash cans, ATMs, and even functioning toilets, mirrors, cabinets and light switches. It's like a neat little slice of a low poly, late 80s and early 90s interpretation of Hollywood. Blood cities on the other hand are a little more vague, featuring fewer distinct details, mostly due to sharing assets with other levels, which consist mainly of vague crypts, mansions and castles. But even here, they look believable, with buildings having clear purposes, like being a butchery, a hotel, a train station and so on. There are even smaller details like beds, telephones, tables and everything else you'd find in real life. However, it's worth pointing out that the majority of elements, certainly the interactive ones, are exclusive to the interiors of buildings. After all, there's not that many light switches to flick on the outside of a house. This, however, means that there often isn't really much to do when it comes to the exteriors, aside from fighting the odd enemy or two. To be fair, this was the case in Doom 2 as well, but unlike in that one, the extra street portions of the cities are restricted to one or two roads each. While a track through the inside of a house can take you upwards of minutes, you really only spend as much time outside as it takes you to walk from one end of the street to the other. While there are secrets at times, the buildings themselves are mostly just for show and to connect the actually interesting rooms within. You basically just go from one designated city area through a connecting structure to the next designated city area. Unlike in Doom 2, there is no large scale exploration where you have to physically walk from one end of town to the other. Not only that, but Duke's and Blood's levels are also much more linear than the ones from Doom. You're required to take a very specific route through each stage that only sometimes allows for a bit of deviation from the trail to grab a few goodies. You can't really decide to tackle stages in a non-linear fashion, and even skipping certain keys is only possible sometimes via the help of additional items like the jetpack or jump boots. Furthermore, Doom 2's levels stand out comparatively, because it's going for a different, much more abstract style. Duke Nukem City levels are incredibly realistic, but they don't offer much else aside from that. And while Blood goes for a more gothic horror aesthetic, even its cities mostly boil down to abandoned house or destroyed building. Doom 2 city levels on the other hand are corrupted by demonic influences, warping and twisting them to hell's image. I mean, no wonder they don't look much like real places, considering how much of them is infested by infernal structures. And in regards to the story, this becomes even more horrifying. I mean, this is your hometown, where you grew up in, and yet it's almost unrecognizable to you. Hell, Gotcha is apparently the very center of the city, and yet it looks barely anything like one. How many people had to suffer and die for it to reach that stage? Maybe it's not swimming in blood for no reason. So, why are the city levels in Doom 2 the way that they are? 
Well, for starters, the game came out almost two whole years before Duke Nukem 3D and three years before Blood. It was one of, maybe even the first FPS game at the time to feature actual urban environments. But aside from that, the majority of all the maps in the game were made by Sandy Peterson, who was also responsible for most levels in Doom 1. That includes many of the more nonsensical hell levels from episodes 2 and 3 that I mentioned earlier. Considering that he created around 18 out of 32 maps in less than a year, it's possible that he was a smidge short on time and had to rush things a little. On top of that, levels could now be much bigger in size, which might have limited how detailed they could be before lagging to hell and back. None of that makes up for their shortcomings though. It explains them, but doesn't get rid of them. However, I just don't believe these levels and the entire game are as terrible as people make them out to be. They are simplistic, that's for sure, but not much more than other Doom levels. You just have to use your imagination a little, which, judging by the story, was the intention from the start. Furthermore, they go less for visual accuracy and more for larger interconnected places that you can explore all at once. And this focus on gameplay over graphics basically lies in Doom's DNA. It's not really a looker, but damn does it play well. Kind of like how the NES Mario games still held up even when the Super Nintendo dropped years later. I just really love Doom 2, it's my favorite one in the entire series and I have a blast each time I replay it. And while I will admit that its city levels could be a lot better, I still cherish them and will defend them until the end of time. I mean, there's a reason I was able to recreate suburbs from memory. And that's a good point. They are memorable, considering people still talk about them. I see more discussions about the city stages from Doom 2 than I do about cities from any other game. Maybe not positive conversations, but conversations nonetheless. And considering only about two and a half stages in the game even are city levels, that's impressive. So in that regard, I'd rather have a flawed yet unique experience than one that fades into obscurity over time. Doom 2 will forever have to live in Doom 1's shadow, but it still manages to stand out against it at the same time. And not just because of the super shotgun, just 99%. And now's the time for you to tell me what you think. Did your opinion on the city levels change? If so, please comment down below. And of course, please consider liking, subscribing and perhaps even supporting me on Patreon. Anything is appreciated. But for now, thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day and goodbye.